All right, so you, you know we've been talking about it today. Messi last night, he gets unveiled. Uh, I mean, it was a disaster. Well, what else are you going to say? Uh, joining us now is Mike Ryan. Uh, can I still call Mike Ryan executive producer like you were? You weren't. You were. I feel like maybe you're not again. How do I int- – what's the proper title for Mike Ryan of the Dan Levitard show? Uh, I think that's it. Mike Ryan of the Dan Levitard show, Metal Arc Media. Because that's, that's not a good intro, right? Executive producer that he was, then he wasn't, that he was, then he wasn't. That's not a good intro. No. No, we can both agree that that was a bad intro. <laughs> uh, thank you for joining us here, man. I appreciate it. And, you know, when I want to talk about Messi with someone, we got to get Mike Ryan on here because he was obviously, you know, my listeners, if you don't know, he was all over the Messi news for a long time. He messy, so he was right about everything. Props to Mike Ryan. Mike Ryan had it first. And Leno Messi gets introduced last night in in what, for me, as the at-home viewer, like, I want to talk about all the awesome stuff with Messi in a moment. But last night was a disaster, Mike. You know, yeah. I I really, I don't know if you know, I'm an inaugural season ticket holder, all right, for Inter Miami. But I wasn't about to go to that because I kind of feel like, at least in the very beginning, it's going to be a disaster, all the messy stuff. Like, I, I just read recently that they... I guess in their minds, fix the parking situation. I don't know if that means it's fixed, but I'm I'm not going out there until they get a few trial runs in them, you know? So I spent the whole day yesterday, Mike, looking forward to last night. I was, when's it 8 o'clock already? Oh, 825, it doesn't start? Like, I'm waiting for it. And dude, it was like, it was amateur hour, man. How did you experience it? Um, I guess my expectations were really low for it because I, I thought, I kind of anticipated the same thing. It's MLS. It's um, the biggest star in the sport coming to an infrastructure that's never had the biggest star in the sport come by and visit. Um, it was also GA uh, for many folks, and um, the weather was not going to cooperate. If you want, look, most unveilings, production quality wise, do feel like amateur hour. We just don't really watch stadium we, or get the appeal quite honestly of stadiums full of people to watch some guy come out in full uniform and dribble the ball at his feet they didn't, didn't even have that down here weather kind of got in the way of some of the larger production aspects of it but um I, considering my expectations were so low for it i didn't really come away with oh this is amateur hour i was like well this is a team that's a little in over its head a league that's a little in over its head and mother nature decided to pour a monsoon down on it. So I think expectations were met. I was happy that they had this one event to kind of stress test the whole thing as a season ticket holder. I have my concerns about getting in and out uh, once we get going here on Friday. But all in all, I think it's a positive thing that uh, Inter Miami got a stadium full of people to sit through a rainstorm of pretty epic proportion and bad lightning and just overcome all of that for a glimpse at a guy in a t-shirt holding up his uh, his next team jersey it's it is kind of cool there are some positive aspects to it do you think there was any considerations them having last night at hard rock stadium the hard rock stadium thing i understand why a lot of people want that a lot of the neutrals want it hell a lot of um inner miami supporters want it even though it might complicate things for some season ticket holders because the fb infrastructure there uh through my reporting i i said a couple of times that the Moss family wants to make sure Stephen Ross doesn't get a single cent out of this whole thing. Uh, I know that there's been some pressure from the league to, hey, maybe the U.S. Open Cup, since that isn't a league match, if you advance and end up hosting the final, maybe you can host the final at uh, Hard Rock Stadium. There has been pressure from higher ups, but the Moss family, which has been burned in negotiations by Stephen Ross when Stephen Ross brought the ICC down here, how Stephen Ross has uh, kind of bullied some of the other teams over here. The, the Moss family isn't too enthused at the notion of Stephen Ross and the Miami Dolphins making any money off of this. What is the – where are we with the stadium? Like, what's the latest with, with Miami? Because obviously everyone was making – it's easy to make jokes last night, right, where, you know, it's Fort Lauderdale. Everyone keeps saying Miami and it's Fort Lauderdale. Although it was kind of weird where, you know – Jorge Moss, not a single time mentioned Fort Lauderdale. Like, 
he really was trying to give off the impression for people watching on television that they're in the heart and soul of Miami Beach last night. Yeah, that, that, that's a concerted effort. The, the, the team knows its present situation and how it doesn't really match everything that was promised right now. The the herons and the flamingos and the tropic uh, drums and, and the beaches. That's not really the scene out of Drive King Stadium. Like, why Nor did they the... show last night when they showed the aerial view? Why did they show the empty abandoned warehouses off commercial boulevard? It's so <laughs> nice. That, that, that's all marketing. Uh, if you, I, I drive by Mel Reese uh, quite often right next to the airport and the, the golf course is overgrown. It's not being maintained. It's uh, gated off. The anticipation is that uh, a shovel goes in the ground relatively soon. I did know that maybe some of the equity stuff was a little complicated because the second a shovel does go in the ground, the, the valuation on that franchise goes up. So maybe that's an explanation. I know that there was a bit of a delay that Inter Miami wouldn't start paying rent until active construction on the site happened. So they bought themselves about a month here. But that's not what people want to hear. The expectation is, or at least the the messaging, from Inter Miami is that the stadium will be done in 2025 for the 2025 se- season. So which for is a Messi's very aggressive... last contractual year, right? He does have a he does have. There's a mutual option for both uh, sides to extend. Um, it's a, his contract does. It's a two and a half year contract, so it's a 2026 type of deal. But um, they can get creative with the the season and still have the uh, the stadium ready for the season, but not start the season. At that stadium, they can really front load their schedule with road games. It wouldn't be the first time that's happened in MLS. In fact, it's happened quite a bit uh, in MLS where a team moves into a new stadium about midway through the season. So we'll see that they do have a construction background, the Moss family, and they found a way to erect a a temporary stand for 3,000 extra seats in pretty quick time. They erected that stadium such that it is prefab construction and all in uh, in in a pretty quick turnaround. So we'll see. I, I'm I'm done doubting the the Moss family at this point. I think they bought themselves just a little bit of credit, given that uh, given that they they got Ly- uh, Lionel Messi here. All right, so let's let's actually talk about Messi, the player, and, and what he potentially does to this team. You know, it's funny. I wonder how you experienced it, Mike, because when when we got the word that it's official that Messi is coming to Inter Miami, I was excited because I get to watch Messi. As opposed, and I didn't think at all or care at all what that meant actually for Inter Miami. And and the the correlation I'm making is when LeBron announced that he's coming to the Heat, I wasn't excited to see LeBron. I was excited for what it means for the Miami Heat and winning championships. It's like the opposite here. I just I just want to watch Messi. So mm-hmm. what what is his uh like him being here now? What does it actually mean for Inter Miami? Like, is he still in a place in his career where, I mean, they're in last place, you know? So, like, what does it yeah. mean for Inter Miami? They're in last place. Uh, they, For them, they had been on better form. They had drawn three out of their last four, mm-hmm. and then they got they had cl- they got clobbered against expansion St. Louis. They're presently bottom in the Eastern Conference right now. That They're still within striking distance of a playoff spot, though. They, they just need to win, like, three in a row, and they're right back in it. Well, for what it means for Messi, the player, last I saw him, he was pretty good. Uh, <laughs> he was in an Argentinian national shirt, boss in a game. So he he's still very good. He Is he the player that we saw a couple of months back in the World Cup? I don't know if we're going to see that Messi because he's at he's at age 36 now, and the competition's a little bit different, and the, the expectations and the, and the pressure – and the stakes are a lot different. Is this guy coming to MLS at the end of his career? That's a factual statement. But he is also much better than everybody else on the pitch. And I'm very curious to see how this team sets up around him. Messi teams succeed when they allow Messi to do his thing. Don't expect much in terms of tracking back and defending. Don't expect much in terms of running. But you can your you're starting eleven can survive one guy doing that, especially if that one guy is Messi. And he's that brilliant with the ball at his feet. The uh, the strategy to get some older guys, some longer in the tooth guys, granted, they absolutely need someone like Sergio Busquets because their defense with the injuries has been really had a hatchet taken to it. But does he have the pace to keep up in MLS? 
Jordy Alba, they're super thin. Again, lots of injuries at that fullback position. But does he have the pace? There is one thing that you can say about MLS, and you need to run in this league. There are really great athletes. The pace is a little hectic. And if you if you're gonna just be ball watching and expect to get by on your own talent, we've seen plenty of older players come into MLS thinking that it's what they could do and they don't survive it. So I think MLS would be really smart. Granted, they address some needs with these signings, but I'm a little concerned at the pace and the athleticism of some of these older signings in Busquets and potentially uh, Jordi Alba, which seems all but done. I, I think that they need to get a lot of people around Messi to do the dirty work. That's how all his teams get successful, unless he's next scene, yes, and Xavi, and that's not going to be the case over here. Where does Messi, how does he compare to other soccer greats who came over to MLS? You know, Zlatan and, and Beckham and Rooney, like, where Messi is in his career, how does that compare to where those guys were in their careers? So Beckham was at, at a pretty comparable age, but Beckham had a, a different game. Beckham Beckham's personality was bigger than his game. Beckham was a free kick specialist, wasn't someone that would score a, a lot. That's not necessarily sexy. And for the casual fan, they, they don't necessarily know what it means for a midfielder who's just a passer and a set-piece specialist to boss the game. Uh, Zlatan came into the league because he was kind of out of options. He was at a point in his career where people expected him to fall off. He he had been injured, and he came in, and he totally crushed the league. He he just decimated the league, and that was a guy that wasn't running. And he was just a, a prime goal scorer. In fact, he performed so well, he ended up going back to Europe shortly thereafter. I think Zlatan is closer to the, the type of output that you can expect from Messi. Messi still... Very much, <laughs> look, he's, he's a couple of months removed from playing the best soccer we had ever seen, arguably the greatest player ever play. So he's still that guy. And I'm really interested to see how it how that works if you just plop it in into MLS. Granted, they're not playing an MLS opponent in their first game. They're playing Cruz right. Azul, which will be an interesting test. How much time, like when it comes to a star player joining, you know, a soccer club, how much time is there needed to build chemistry? Does Do you need that, or is it just, hey, you put Messi in there, he's going to make it happen? Like, how does I that work? Messi is, well, Messi's playing with a bunch of academy kids and a, and a couple of play, uh, players that he's played his entire career with. So that's actually a pretty easy plug-and-play. He's the greatest player of all time. Like, Gareth Bale made it work running uh, – uh, joining a team that was already in full motion and having to figure out chemistry there. Uh, Zlatan made it work. Rooney, a similar situation, came into the league uh, beyond his uh, his prime in, in European football, came into the league, performed admirably. Uh, actually, above admir admirably. He was a really good goal scorer. So was Robbie Keane. So there have been really good examples of strikers coming in. Aging midfielders, though, that is cause for concern. We saw Pirlo struggle. We saw Gerard struggle. We saw Lampard struggle in this league. And those people have a pace that's a little bit closer to comparable to Lionel Messi. However, they don't have the skill level at this point in their career, at the, the point in their careers where they came to MLS, that Messi has displayed quite recently. So I think ultimately, I'm not going to be the dumb person with the take that, oh, it's going to take them uh, uh, some time to acclimate. That, that'll that be for excuse making if it doesn't indeed happening, if it does indeed end up happening. But I, I would I would suggest that it's a pretty fair bet that the greatest player we've ever seen can jump in MLS and do just fine. Now, lastly here, Mike, I don't know if you caught on television like I did in the pregame stuff, Taylor Twellman, and he, he had the quote, this is the biggest heist in the history of American sports. Is is that a fair statement? In terms of like a massive coup heist, it's probably, there was, look, there was a huge heist in the American Century Championship where someone yelled on during Marty Sw uh, Fish's downswing who bet on the, and, and the person <laughs> went and admitted that bet on Steph Curry. That was uh... a, That was a heist. Uh, in terms of, who, when you consider who is out there reporting that it wasn't happening, yeah, I think, yeah, outside of yours truly, there weren't really a lot of people ever given Inter Miami a chance even in this. It's it's pretty massive, but it's also a pretty big gamble. This is a league that's almost entirely behind a paywall, and it's on a streamer that 
I know they have Ted Lasso, but it's on a streamer that's not one of the considered essentials. And Messi is one of those things that can bring casual fans into the tent. But are those casual fans going to end up paying a subscription fee to, to watch the spectacle? I don't know. Uh, I did read somewhere last week that they're finally approaching the threshold for revenue sharing, Apple and MLS. And that's going to be big for Messi because that's entwined in his deal. But I, I, I'm genuinely curious to see how this, this all goes from a subscription model bet that they made. But I don't think Taylor is wrong in saying that this is one of the bigger coups in American sports history. He's the most famous person on the planet. And he's going to be playing next to Fort Lauderdale Executive Airport against Cruz Azul on Friday. Great job, Mike. What do you guys got coming up the next couple of days? Well, I'm actually heading on a plane to uh, MLS All-Star in Dallas uh, after the show today. And uh, going to have some cool content opportunities out there. Stu Gatz is back from his uh, Dead & Company experience. Oh. Yeah, it was the final Dead & Company show. Uh, which meant they ju just took the opportunity to announce Dead Reckoning uh, <laughs> in a whole new cash grab outfit for, for the dead guys. So we thought that uh, we'd be able to pop a bottle of champagne and think that it, would, it was Stu's last uh, uh, gig on the road. But, but it is not. It looks like there's going to be more gigging. But Stu's back in studio. Dan's back in studio. We have a new shipping container member in Lucy Ro Rodine that I'm very excited about. So check us out. We're on the DraftKings Network. It's available via Samsung. More outlets to come very shortly, folks. Thank you for your patience. But as always, you can always check out our YouTube page. Full shows go up on there. You can see all the cool content that we got at Lake Tahoe, which was jaw-droppingly beautiful. YouTube.com slash at Levitard Show. Great job, man. Thanks a lot for hanging out with us today. Thank you, Zaz.